Hello YouTube and welcome back to Be A Loser. In this series we've discussed the basics of fasting and hopefully many of you are trying it. And if not, then hopefully you're interested in trying it. And of course, one of the biggest concerns with fasting is getting hungry. Even those of you who've been trying fasting probably have said something along the lines of, I love fasting, but man, do I get hungry sometimes? Well, in this video, we'll go ahead and discuss the elephant in the room. If I'm hungry, should I eat? As we've discussed in previous videos, fasting does not cause uncontrollable hunger. Most people falsely believe that they simply won't be able to go 18 hours, much less three days, without becoming insanely hungry. And as we've also discussed, most people who do actually try it find that their hunger and appetite both decrease over time. This has certainly been my experience. But this idea that if we don't eat often enough, we'll become overwhelmed by hunger must come from somewhere. Even healthcare professionals will tell you to constantly eat throughout the day. Well, a short time after we eat, somewhere between four and eight hours, the glucose from our meal begins to dissipate and we begin feeling hunger pangs and can become a bit irritable. Sometimes these pangs can be fairly strong. So we make the assumption that if we go four times that long, 16 to 24 hours, then the hunger pangs would be four times as bad. However, as we've discussed, this is not what actually happens. Hunger is actually controlled by unconditioned stimuli or triggers. Think about it. You may not be hungry at all, but then you walk by a backyard barbecue and you smell that meat grilling and bam, hunger. Additionally, hunger can be controlled by conditioned stimuli. This was demonstrated by Ivan Pavlov in the late 1800s in his famous experiment with dogs. A quick summation of the experiment is that whenever Pavlov fed the dogs, he would pair the food with a ringing bell. Eventually, the dogs would salivate and become hungry just from hearing the ringing of a bell even in the absence of food. And so we can quite easily see how this would relate to our own lives. Hunger can be a natural response or it can be conditioned. These learned responses can be quite powerful. Think about it, if every day you get up and eat breakfast at 7 a.m., then eat lunch at 12 p.m. and dinner at 7 p.m., well, then the time of day becomes your conditioning meaning that you will always be hungry at those times regardless of if you eat a big lunch and would not be hungry for your 7 p.m. dinner bill. Another conditioned response would be eating while watching TV. If every time we sit down to watch TV we are either eating a meal or a snack, then whenever we sit down to watch TV, the conditioned res response will be for us to become hungry. This is why it's important to eat meals at the dinner table. Well, one of many reasons. If you look at different aspects of life, you can see all the previously hidden conditioned stimuli that trigger our conditioned response of hunger. Popcorn and soda at the movies, hot dogs and beer at a baseball game, snacks during a break at work, snacks at halftime of the kids' football game, and on and on. So what do we do? How do we break the conditioning? Well, in today's world, it can be difficult. So that's why I first and foremost recommend introducing your fasting regimen slowly, trying two 16-hour fasts in a week, then two 18, two 24, and so on. And if you're conditioned to specific times of the day, then don't try to change those cold turkey. Instead, replace the habit of eating with a better habit of drinking water, tea, or coffee. And as I said before, eat your meals at the dinner table with the TV off. So what about social occasions? Well, typically we get together over a meal or snacks in the break room, etc. Trying not to eat while everyone else does 
is a losing proposition. And skipping these social occasions altogether is also a losing proposition for life. So don't fight them. Again, the beauty of fasting and one of its biggest advantages is its flexibility. If you know that you have lunch with coworkers on specific days, then tailor your regimen to include them, such as skipping dinner the night before and breakfast the day of. Dinners out on the weekends with friends, same thing, different times. And lunch during the week at work is pretty easy to skip. Just keep working and drink some tea or coffee. Okay, so that covers the conditioned stimuli, but what about those natural, unconditioned ones? Well, these stimuli actually start in the brain. It's known as cephalic phase response. Cephalic refers to the brain. This hunger response is triggered by many factors, sights and smells, and it's underway before we even eat any food. It's driven by hormones such as ghrelin, peptide YY, leptin, and more. And again, these all are produced based on the expectation of food, not the actual consumption of it. So to counteract these while fasting, we need to remove ourselves from these food stimuli or triggers. So the most obvious example of this would be preparing food while fasting. This is incredibly difficult to do and not a matter of willpower. Remember, your body's natural response is to make you hungry in the presence of food. This is also why it's important to stay busy. If you don't have time to think about food, then your body has no triggers to make you hungry. Again, this is why it's easy to skip lunch at work. But remember that in our society, we're bombarded with fast food restaurants and TV spots that are trying to get us to eat. So the world is literally against us on this one. And this is why we really have to be vigilant and find ways to stay away from all these food triggers. But let's be honest, no matter how well controlled you are, you're going to get hungry. So this is where you must remember that hunger pangs come in waves. They don't continue stacking up until they are unbearable. And we've discussed how to handle them before, but it's worth repeating. Drink water, tea, or coffee, and wait 10 to 15 minutes for it to pass. Worst case, have a cup of broth if the hunger is simply unbearable. It's also important to note that hunger is not stimulated by an empty stomach, nor is it determined by how long it has been since you ate. And this is why people can go without eating for days, weeks, and even months. In several studies that we've discussed, everyone involved stated that hunger decreased in the first 48 hours and disappeared after that. In the studies, and among Dr. Fung's patients as well, most found the second day of the fast to be the most difficult for hunger. And since we know this, we can prepare for it. So, What's the point of all of this? Well, to quote, hunger is a state of mind, not a state of stomach. So do we need to eat when we're hungry? Absolutely not. And that's it for this one. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable alerts by clicking the bell so that you'll be updated when we post new videos. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Be A Loser Today. If you enjoy the videos and series, please consider hitting the like button as that really does help the channel. And we love seeing all the comments and questions, so please keep them coming. As always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, keep being a loser.